dealing with the media oftentimes seems to be a real challenge for, uh, for leaders, especially in time of crisis. I know you've touched on it in other topics, but uh, in my tenure, I had occasion to be the press information officer for a couple of years in, in my former department. And, and I know at times of crisis, sometimes uh, not everybody in the department is in sync with what the way they believe that the media should be handled. I wonder if you could take a couple of moments to share some insight and some ideas to all the people in this room as to some of uh, the uh, successes that you've had and then perhaps also maybe touch on some of the times where you uh, said or did something one way and maybe you felt it could be uh, done another way. Can I piggyback on that question? Uh, can I add, I'm back here. Yes, yes. Um, one of the questions I had, in your experience, uh, specifically for the chief, um, are there incidences where you felt that you said too much um, dealing with the media? For example, if you have a, a uh, incident with your uh, police department and sometimes you want to get your word out, but uh, if there's no media coverage of an item and, you, and you're getting stuff out there, have you regretted that? Or I, I just want to get your, your sort of response to, to saying too much sometimes. And sometimes you have the electeds that want to get their voice out and get their message out. And uh, how, do you, how have you handled that? Thank you. There's, uh, there have been times when, in retrospect, I, I wish that I had been more guarded in what I had said. There's times when I've uh, talked to groups of uh, reporters and you have a relationship with some and not so much with others. Uh, that whole dynamic is changing as we, as we move forward, where you have bloggers, you have uh, the blogger media versus the mainstream media. Uh, you've got a lot of new people. Almost anybody can be media, if you will, under the new definition. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of work to be done on a daily basis in trying to keep track of who the players are, what their agenda is if they have one. Uh, and most of them do, and trying to figure out where they're going. And I think what it's caused is uh, you can't let your guard down because of relationships that you believe you have with the media, that you have to stay on point, that what you say will likely be taken out of context, it, particularly by the, the blogger community. Um, so I think that in looking at it, you have to really kind of script where you want to go with bullet points and that's kind of the way I work off of. And then how far will you let them take you off message with follow-up questions? And you have to have a comfort level if it's a case that you've sat down with the case agent, the detective handling the case, and that you're comfortable going to a certain point no further. But being honest and saying that would jeopardize the investigation for me to go any further on that point and then move on to someone else. And you can do it in a way that's, that's respectful, but yet you're controlling the message. But yeah, there's, there's always times where, not so much that I feel like I've told them more than I wanted to tell them, but I would have liked to have said it differently than I did to get to make the message more clear and maybe more succinct. Doctor? There is a, um, a luxury that I had uh, in the FBI, which was to have professional media people with me. Um, not all the time, but uh, certainly on the big events. There is, and it was very helpful to have somebody who, ha who had the bullet points ready. That if, if you didn't have them in your head, you should have them in your head, but you don't always have the time to do that. And you have to, you have to listen to the professionals who really sort of know this business about dealing with the media. And even if you're at the top level of your organization, there is still a lot you can learn about being interviewed, about about dealing with, with these folks. And so if you have never gotten any media training, go, go and get it. Uh, I'd strongly urge you to go and get it. And there's some that's specifically developed you know, for the law enforcement field or whatever particular field you represent um, so that you can learn to talk about certain issues. Watch the clips of individuals very carefully uh, when you see them on TV. You know, how did they handle it? What was their body language? Uh, and so forth. Um, and because you can continually learn, there's some people that will be good always, they're just naturals, but not everybody is. So I, I urge you to do that. The other thing, Jimmy talked about sometimes, you know, the media is your friend and sometimes they're not your friends, but the relationships you establish with the key people uh, over time can be very helpful. Um, the camera people, the writers, the producers, the the on-camera interviewers, 
Um, not that you're going to become their friend, and you don't want to let your guard down in what you say, because then pretty soon you, you will slip up, and you will say more than you want. But if you have a good relationship with them, they want to put out a good story, too. Um, there are those that are diabolical and want to you know, embarrass you wherever, wherever they can. But most of the time, they want to get the message out. And lots of times, you need them more than they need you. If, if I could just jump on a piece that uh, Kathleen mentioned was uh, the camera people. I think so often when the media show up, you focus on the person that you're used to seeing on TV, the reporter, and you want to talk to them. And sometimes you have the tendency to walk by the camera person as if they're not there, that just the camera's there. Uh, we're all people. And the person who's going to do that edit in the van that's going to go downtown and get broadcast is not the person, the talking head, the reporter. It's the camera guy. And so, again, with the relationships, go deep on the relationships. If you have an opportunity to be able to have a relationship with the editorial board, great, because they shape what goes on and, and as far as public opinion as well. Um, so take it, take it beyond the surface level anytime you can, I'd say. And yeah. for you up there with the camera, you know, I hope you were listening to, to that. <laughs> <laughs> and Chief, I have to tell you, all those years that you were uh, out there on front for LAPD on all kinds of different issues that came up, you, you did a phenomenal job. And, and a lot of us looked at you as kind of a, uh, somebody who to uh, emulate, so thank you. Colleen, um, how do you deal with the media? Well, probation is not necessarily always a, um, a, you know, a sizzling uh, agency for the media to come and you know, want to get stories from because they just most of the time don't really know what we do. And um, so we always had kind of the opposite effect. We were always trying to get them to come to our department. We would try to organize ride-alongs. We'd get them to come into our institutions, get permission from the judge to let them get in to see portions of the institution. Um, we couldn't exploit the kids that are incarcerated, but we could exploit the good programs that were going on, et cetera. And so we always kind of had the opposite effect of what was going on. It was hard to get the media to come and see what we were doing because there was frankly always much more sizzling stories amongst my police partners um, that they would necessarily want to come and talk to us. There were a few occasions where <clears throat> they might jump on a story because it made a lot of you know media, maybe a particular investigation we did and, and a recommendation to the court for sentencing where you had explosive victim issues. Um, and so we would periodically get investigative reporters want to know how do we collect money for, for victims? What kinds of, you know, how do we go after a particular defendant to get money? How come they don't go to prison more often? Those kinds of things. We had one uh, media situation that was kind of interesting is um, <clears throat> we had a female employee up at one of our camps um, who decided that she needed to fall in love with one of our juvenile detainees. and. Um, and he um, obliged that for a period of time. And um, after he got sent to a state facility um, and was there for a while, he didn't tell anyone. Well, he called um, to talk to her um, on a cell phone or some such thing and discovered that maybe she was no longer true to him. Um, and so the next thing we know, um, this whole thing turns into an investigation for, from some of the local law enforcement agencies, and it ends up in the newspaper that they had taken her into custody during the middle of the night, and the charges are out there in the newspaper of what they've charged her with. So now we are reacting to the media. We're not, we're not in the position where we can, you know, sort of try to introduce the situation, you know, the concept. So what we tried to do is get a story within the story. And the story within the story was how many kids we have. We have over a thousand kids in custody and this was an anomaly. And we're very thankful it came forward. We're very thankful for our law enforcement partners to do a thorough investigation. And we are looking at procedures to make sure they're tight. And then you hope they print that part. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I, yeah I wish Miami we had parole, a huh? Yeah. I wish we had a TV show that people would 